is the Lord. You've reached Pastor Priscilla Holman. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we love you, we honor you, we worship you. We exalt you for being holy and righteous and pure and true and honorable. You have a good report. Your report is that you mean good and not evil. You have an expected end, a hope that we be in the fulfillment of your purpose and your plan. It is your desire that we be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, that we make our requests made known before you. And you will endow our lives with peace, with joy, with patience, with understanding, with wisdom, that we might trust you that we may not lean toward our own understanding, but receive your perfect will. Father, I thank you because you've been my rod and my staff. You've been my hiding place. You've been my high tower. You've been my wisdom. You've been my strength. You've been my peace, my joy. You've been my provider. You've been my protector. Father, you've been my covering. You've been my all in all. And I thank you. I thank you, Lord God. You've been my worship. been my greatest desire to please, to honor you, to live for you. You've been the captain of my soul, the author and finisher of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wrap me in your arms, God, and protect me. Wrap me in your arms. Keep me covered in your grace and mercy. Wrap me in your arms, God. Keep me comforted, consoled during trials and tribulations. Wrap me in your arms, God. Let me access the holy of hope. Just want to be with you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. There's something about trusting in the holy and righteous God. Because he truly knows everything. And if you truly trust in him, you never have to worry about nothing. He orchestrates all things according to his will that will work out for those good who love him and who desire his will. There's nothing he doesn't know. 
nothing he can't see. Nothing he can't do. We don't have to seek any of the element other than him. He's proven himself to be faithful. Only he can do and know what no one else will ever know and be able to do. His word is true and he keeps his word. There's something about worshiping the holy and righteous God. Trusting in him. He gives a greater assurance that he's there in the midst of every situation. Take me to the place, Lord, to the secret place. I want to be with you, Lord. Because in your presence, in your presence, God, is comfort, assurance, confirmation, revelation, a declaration of who you are. Yes. Wrap me in your arms, God. Yes. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about desiring to please you, Lord. It's all about your will, God. Desiring your will to be manifested. Thank you, God. We worship you. We adore you. We honor you. We exalt you, God. It's all about you. Receive the worship, Lord. Wrap me in your arm, God. Take me to the holy of holies. And make me acceptable and pleasing. For you are my heavenly father. Yes, God. Yes, God. One who's sovereign and mighty and majestic and all his doing. We have a lot that sometimes we take for granted. Because we're too consumed with our own doings and our own desires that we fail to accept the will of God for our Ah, what a wonderful rejoicing moment to spend with the King of Glory. Make these inner vessels connected and desiring his will over us. You do know we've been redeemed not to live our life the way we want to, but to live our life under the authority and sovereign Lord God Almighty who we belong. You do understand that we are no longer we belong to him 
who loves us more than you can ever comprehend and who desires the very best. for our lives. He has a specific purpose and plan for each individual. And we will never know our purpose and plan except we seek him intimately on a personal level. And he overflows his revelation into our life. There's something about having that intimacy with the sovereign king. There's something about desiring his will. He takes the cares of the world. He takes the trials and tribulations and he carries them. And they are no longer a concern because you know your heavenly father shall prevail. I'm going to be coming out of the writing of Deuteronomy. And the reason I'm bringing this message out of Deuteronomy is because it focuses on the appointment of priests, prophets, and the laws concerning various forms of idolatry. Idolatry. We quite often don't focus on idolatry. And so we overlook what idolatry is. The Bible gives various scriptures regarding idolatry. Idolatry involves placing anything or anyone above God in one's affection, reverence, or devotion. So theologically and doctrinally, you can idolize a person. You can idolize a place. You can idolize a thing. And find yourself placing those elements above God in your affection, your reverence, and your devotion. Meditate on that. Your affection, your reverence, and your devotion can be transferred to another. That's idolatry. It is easy to enter into idolatry unbeknowingly. It can be used as a pulling away, a separation between you and God. While the Lord will never leave you, you can leave him through idolatry. All throughout scripture, we see how the people fell into idolatry. Very subtle. Very subtle. Anything you desire, you devote your life to. You reverence, you have a great affection, a drawing to higher than God, more important to you than the Lord. That is idolatry. And that is what will control you. It will control your mind, your thinking. It will control your will, your desires, and what? It will control your actions. It will control your affections, your love, how you spend your time, what's on your mind, the choices you make, because you will love it more than God. Love the Lord God with all your mind, heart, body, and soul. 
Because if you love anything more than God, you will find yourself in idolatry over a person, a place, a thing, a people, anything. The Bible gives very examples. He speaks about it in Exodus 23 to 5. Exodus 20, verses 3 through 5. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. We will make many things an idolatry. We will serve, make a priority, give all our energy, all our thoughts to things and situations and not have room and time for God. Deuteronomy 5, verses 7 through 9, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. 1 Corinthians 10, 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee for my dollars. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Idolatry, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We will listen to messages from those that will tell you you can inherit the kingdom of God. When God says, the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revilings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Idolatry is not merely the physical act of bowing down to statues or images. It can also be manifested as giving undue priority to material possessions wealth, fame, relationships above God. Let me say that again. Idolatry is not just a merely physical act of bowing down to statues or images. It also is manifested as giving undue priority to material possessions, wealth, fame, or relationships above God. Now, God knows all who are entangled in idolatry. No matter what we say, no matter what we try to perpetrate in our outward activities or doing, God knows everything and everyone who has found themselves entangled in trap, in a snare, in an obsession of idolatry. You know, some have found themselves in idolatry over positions. They love the positions more than they love God. 
That's idolatry. They love material wealth more than God. They love the fame more than God. They lack an intimate relationship with God. They love their will more than God. That's idolatry. When your allegiance is to a people, a person, or anything upon this earth more than God, that's idolatry. In Deuteronomy 18, let me go into, let me, before I get into Deuteronomy 18, because some people lack an understanding of what God says when he explains the kingdom of God will not be received if you commit egregious or abomination toward God. You want to choose what the abominations are, but many are in just as egregious abominations as others. You see, when God said uncleanness, he is speaking about moral impurity. Or filthiness. We know that adultery is the act of being unfaithful to one's spouse. Fornication is sexual immorality or any sexual activity outside of the bonds of marriage. Uncleanness is moral impurity or filthiness. Do you understand what moral impurity is? Lasciviousness is lewd or lustful behavior often associated with excess or lack of restraint in sexual matters. Idolatry is the worship of idols or false gods, ascribing ultimate value or devotion to something other than the true one God. Witchcraft is the involvement in occult practices or sorcery. Hatred, intense dislike or animosity towards others. Yes, hatred will keep you out of the kingdom of God. It's an intense dislike or animosity towards others. Variance, discord, disagreement, or conflict. Emulations, jealousy, or envy, particularly in relation to the success or possessions of others. Jealousy, emulations will keep you out of the kingdom of God. Wrath, anger, and rage, that'll keep you out of the kingdom of God. Strife, conflict, and contention will keep you out of the kingdom of God. Heresies, false teaching, or beliefs that deviate from orthodox. Envy, resentment, or covetousness will keep you out of the kingdom of God. Murderers, unlawful killing of another person. Drunkenness, excessive consumption of alcohol. Revelings, wild or riotous behavior, often associated with excessive drinking or partying. These are all works of the flesh that will not inherit the kingdom of God. This serves as a warning against living a life characterized by ungodliness and encourages those to pursue righteousness and spiritual growth through the Holy Spirit. It is God's desire that you pursue his righteousness and spiritual growth through the Holy Spirit. the operative power that is necessary for the spiritual growth 
and to receive his righteousness is the Holy Spirit. Works of the flesh will not allow you to inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you may say, well, I am, I don't drink. But you have envy and covetousness toward others. You won't inherit the kingdom. Some of you may say, well, I've never committed adultery. But you have constant conflict and contention among one another. That won't allow you to inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you may say, well, I've never committed fornication. But you have moral impurity and filthiness. That will preclude you of the kingdom. Some of you might say, well, I don't involve myself in witchcraft. But you have variance, discords, disagreement, and conflict. Some of you may say, well, I don't commit adultery, idolatry. I've never put anything or devoted all of my time to something above God. But you have lewd and lustful behavior. You lack restraint. Now, let me speak about moral impurity or filthiness. Because some people don't really understand what it is. It's actions, thoughts, or attitudes that are morally corrupt or defiled. It's behaviors that violate moral standards or principles according to the wisdom of God's saying. You have actions, thoughts, and attitudes that are morally corrupt. They're defiled. You must understand the works of the flesh that will keep you out of the kingdom of God versus the works that you're doing that will never get you in. When the Bible uses the word cleanse, he's talking about moral impurity. Filthiness. He's speaking about your actions, your thoughts, your attitude, your morally corrupt and defiled demeanor. And that goes for whatever laws we accept that are morally impure. That is not kingdom driven purpose or standards. In ornate affection, evil, conspicuous science and covetousness. We pick and choose what we think will be okay and then find ourselves out of the realm of approval for God. You see, evil concubus 
persists, science, is a strong desire or lust, particularly those related to physical or sexual pleasures. Spiritual growth, spiritual maturity, is righteousness, is self-control. That is one of the fruit of the spirit. If you're not abiding in the fruit of the spirit, you're abiding in the works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh can preclude you from the holy of holy to access and receive revelation and understanding and wisdom from the holy and righteous one. Because you separate yourself from the access with the actions that you made a choice to partake of and remain within. Evil is morally wrong. Wickedness is morally wrong. Inordinate affection is morally wrong. Covetousness is morally wrong. All of this is idolatry. And idolatry is when you place your affections, your reverence, which is respect and honor, and your devotion higher than God or anything. I don't care if it's your husband, your child, or your spouse, your wife. Let me get that clear, because I have to say husband or wife, man or woman or child, or young, or any material possession. If it means more to you, then God, you have entered the realm of idolatry. And Satan knows that. And he will allow the idolatry that you have birthed, exalted on your throne in your heart and mind. And now, and that will become a means of control to put you in bondage and slavery. And what God has done, he's given you wisdom knowledge, how to apply information, that if you love him with all your mind, heart, body, and soul, then it will keep you from idolatry. Do you know if somebody tries to force a color on you, that's idolatry? Something so subtle is that? Because you'll be putting your affection, your respect and reverence and your devotion above God. Idolatry is very subtle. And it can be an open avenue for the adversary to come in and put you in captivity and bondage. Because whatever you have idolized, it becomes your drawing force. And your drawing force will be the motivator of your actions. And your actions have consequences. And the consequences have rewards. And the rewards of idolatry are not rewards that are pleasing and acceptable in God's sight. They are judgment rewards. Rewards for the unrighteous and those who have taken paths towards destruction.
Now that is a very subtle way of manipulating and controlling those who was idolatry. That's why the Lord warns us to say, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if you cannot inherit the kingdom of God, then you're not operating in the Holy Spirit. Because if you have idolatry, the Holy Spirit is not the head. Because the Holy Spirit testifies of the giver of the Spirit, the head. That's why the Bible says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Because you can do everything outwardly and not be in the faith. You could be functioning out of covetousness. You could be functioning out of strife and contention. You can be functioning out of moral impurity. You can be functioning out of witchcraft. You can be functioning out of hatred. You can be functioning out of wrath. You can be functioning out of strife. You can be strife. You can be functioning out of heresy. You can be functioning out of envy. You can be functioning out of rebelling. All characters not characterized through the acceptability of the Holy Spirit. Moral impurity, evil and wickedness, inordinate affection, works of the flesh. And I have to stress works of the flesh because until we fully submit to the Lord, then what we're doing, we're operating under the works of the flesh. And that's not godly wisdom. Works of the flesh is accepting, edifying, uplifting, meditating on, desiring. That's a stronghold. Lusting after. Coveting after. That's works of the flesh. Striving. We don't have to strive when the Holy Spirit is operating through you. Anything you ask in my name, I hear you. And if I hear you, you have the petition of the desire that you're asking for. Anything you ask in his name, he hears you because your will is in alignment with his will. And he hears you because you're operating within his spirit realm. You are asking him according to his will. And he's going to fulfill his will. That's why he says all things work together for good to them who are called according to my purpose. Because you are allowing him to work things out in your life according to his will. Now, if it's your will, it's not going to work together for good. Only his will. Because your will becomes self-will and self-will you've made yourself an idol you've taken god's will off the throne and put your will on the throne and you have been created for his will not your will you've been redeemed for his will not your will and that's why the Bible said in James, there's much quarrel, there's much strife and contention and division because you want, but you don't have, because you don't want it for his will, you want it for your will. And when you are in God's will, you're not going to get into strife and contention. You're not going to get into envy and covetousness. Why? Because if you're in his will, 
Whatever he wants for you, you're going to have. That's the whole premise behind being in his will. Whatever he has for you shall be for you. No one can take God's will for your life. That's impossible. We serve a sovereign, holy, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent Lord and Savior of creation. He's not humanity. He's not these lower powers and principalities. He's greater and higher. And if you're coveting and strife and contention and emulations of works of the flesh, you have not subjected yourself to his will because that is not his will. And you lack the spiritual power that you could have to operate within. And you're being told with the adversary. Because you let your desire become a weak link to enter in. You're not fully clothed with the whole armor. You lack your priority, which was necessary, the arm of God, to prevent such folly. See, we're not supposed to be in a war against ourselves. We are supposed to be in a war against the adversary. God gives us more grace. But this grace keeps us under humility because we draw nigh to God. You see, it's arrogant to think somebody needs to see you. You're putting too much emphasis on you and not God. And that becomes witchcraft and idolatry. Unbeknowing, you put yourself in a position to try to exalt yourself over the will and might of God. And you lack humility. Now let's get back into the meat of this message. Deuteronomy 18. The Bible says that he warned them against false prophets who would rise and speak in the name of other gods. And these false prophets would tell you that the things that you're doing are okay. In other words, they will be familiar spirits operating on behalf of Satan to keep you out of the will of God, to keep you blinded and in idolatry. They will be used as a mouthpiece of destruction to keep your affection on self and others, to keep your reverence on self and others, to keep your devotion on self and others, so that you will be entangled and trapped, overcome with idolatry. False prophets will never tell you the truth of God. They are there to lead you astray with false teaching.
And Deuteronomy talks about all the familiar spirits, fortune tellers, soothsayers, evil spirits, witchcraft, manipulators, supernatural means that are satanic, that have a familiarity, but it's not the Holy Spirit. Satan is a, the works of Satan are signs and wonders, lies, deception. And you will receive that, operate within that, keep up strife and contention among yourselves because you fail to accept the love of God, to receive the knowledge of the truth of God. That is a strong delusion that if you remain in the works of the flesh, God will allow to empower, overpower you, because that's your desire. You'll reap a reward of unrighteousness because you have left the righteousness of his rewards. You see, works of the flesh will never be honorable. It will never draw you to the Lord's heart. And you will never be devoted to him. Works of the flesh is against the love of the truth. The works of Satan is power, signs, and lying wonders. That is the works of the flesh. That is idolatry. And it can be very deceptive, very convincing. The Bible calls it a mystery of iniquity. A mystery of iniquity. that you can find yourself entrapped in because you lack the desire of God's affection, God's reverence and devotion unto him. We do not depend on the ways of the world to know God's future. For our life, because God is the author and finisher of our life. So we depend upon the Lord to reveal to us his perfect will for our life. In fact, we should be praying daily, Lord, what is your will for my life today? It is your desire that you take care of my needs my physical and spiritual needs because without the spiritual you lack life so we should desire spiritual and physical needs to be manifested and made known by God if God is providentially actively involved in the care of his creation then those who say that he is Lord and Savior for their life, should humble themselves and seek his face and his will and allow his will to be manifested over their life. Not humanity's will, not the workings of Satan's will, but God's will. And you must know the difference between God's will and humanity's will, which is the works of the flesh, humanity's will, that will never be pleasing in God's sight, and that will never be able to inherit the kingdom of God. Many have failed to desire God's will. Keep God on his throne. Because it's easy to dethrone God and put ourselves on the throne. It is easy 
to push God in the back and make God become an afterthought if you do not have a consistent daily prayer life, if you don't have a consistent daily yielded in humility to the holy and righteous God, if you don't have a daily intimate relationship with God, you see our relationship is a private relationship. It extends further than Sunday services and Bible study. It's a 24-7 every day engaging in our holy and righteous saint. Our relationship in the thought goes further than what humanity can see or know. It goes on the foundation of what God knows. His truth. He knows those that are his. He knows those that are abiding in his will. He knows those that love him truly. He knows those that are seeking him. He knows those that depend upon him. He knows those that trust him. And he also knows those that will not obey others if it's in enmity with what God's will is for their life. Because the Holy Spirit, the revealer of truth, the giver of wisdom, the excellency that is within these earthly vessels will convict, instruct, prevail, empower, and orchestrate his will for their life. You see, wealth can become an idolatry. It can become an obsession. You're not seeking him and his righteousness. You're seeking the wealth of the world. A false illusion. You're selling your soul to the adversary. Now, God knows we all have need of being in a financial state that can assist with the living in this world. We don't have a God that's not wise. We have a God that has great wisdom. And we also have a God that is not going to allow someone who trusts in God to be led down paths because of people's doing to try to accomplish self-will. That's what faith comes in. And prayer is the working of your faith. So as you wait on God to provide his perfect will for your life through prayer and other avenues that God has you to function in, you still have God on your throne. Your mind is seeking God. Your heart is desiring God. You are reverence God. You're being devoted to God. And you're not idolizing the things of this world. For God knows everything that is necessary for you while you're here on earth. And so you don't fall into people's entrapment. You don't fall into people's fallingness. You don't become a puppet to people's ways, wants, wills, and desire. You become a vessel of integrity that is dedicated to a holy and righteous God. 
because you understand that whatever God has for you, no person can change the course of God's plan. So you don't even worry about it. You don't think twice. You don't even care. You're too busy honoring God, thinking about God, accessing the holy of holy that God allowed you to, seeking God, and keeping him on your throne. You're not seeking humanity. You don't care because God is greater than humanity. That's not a concern. If they don't want to follow God, that's their business. You have to work out your own salvation. For faith without works is dead. So you're honoring God through your faith. You're seeking him through prayer. You're seeking him to waiting upon him to know what is purposeful for your life according to his plan. Despite others, you want to know what God wants for you, for your life. So your mind is meditating on Christ for your life. Your will is seeking Christ for your life. You're not even concerned what somebody else may have or not have. You don't care. Because your God said, if you want, come to him. So you're not operating in covetousness that the adversary will want you to operate in. You're not operating in envy and strife that the adversary will want you to operate in. You're not operating in witchcraft and hatred and emulation and strife and heresy and envy and drunkenness and reviling, and idolatry, and lasciviousness, and uncleanness, and adultery, and fortification. You're not operating in the works of the spirit, but in the works of the flesh. You are abiding in the works of the spirit. The more excellent path in his righteousness, because it's not the flesh and righteousness. And so you have a different sense of peace and joy because this peace and joy is based on a relationship you have with a holy and righteous God. Every morning you wake up, the first thing on your mind is the Lord. Thankful to God for yesterday and thankful for the anticipation of greater moments with him today. His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithful. You have an affection toward a holy and righteous God. You are reverencing God. And your life is becoming a devotion to God, a worship into a holy and righteous God. And you can't change people's fleshly desires. You can't change people's understanding or knowledge. Only God can do that. And so you don't worry about what they understand or don't. You can only speak what God tells you to speak in love and they can receive or reject. That's up to them. You are admonished to live your life for God, not for others. You are accountable for obeying God. Your reward comes from God. And it is God's will that you pursue his righteousness 
and spirituality through the Holy Spirit. And God says, the works of the flesh shall not inherit the kingdom. But yet you'll have something that tells you that it will. And God says it won't. And all you can do is speak truth. Anybody who wants to put you in covetousness, that's not inheriting the kingdom of God. That's the work of the flesh. Anybody who wants to keep you in strife and contention, that's not the work of God. That's the work of the flesh. Anybody wants you in witchcraft, familiar spirits, that's not the work of God. That's the work of the flesh. Anybody wants to draw you into idolatry, that's not the work of God. That's the work of the flesh. Anybody wants to dangle allurements, temptation, that's not the work of God. That's the work of the flesh. Because God does not tempt. God is not a tempter. Satan is. The works of the flesh. Demonic spirits are. But God never tempts. And you must know the works of God versus the works of the adversary. Other than that, you don't know what to resist, but to rebuke. And who to submit up under. That's why the whole arm of God is necessary. Because it protects you and covers you from the workings of the adversary. Your tempter who wants to devour you, swallow you up, destroy you. The father of lies. To keep you from knowing the spirit of truth, the love of truth. That once you defiled and in a strong delusion, but the Father mercies, the God of all comforts, can guide you unto his wisdom through his righteousness for spiritual knowledge. If you desire your physical more than your spiritual, you have idolized the, I'm sorry. If you desire the physical more than the spiritual, you have idolized the physical and have taken God, which is the spiritual, off the throne. Your throne, not his throne. See, we have to understand, you can never change who God is, but you can change how you view God, how you love him, how you seek him, how you depend upon him, how you trust him. But he's not changing who he is. His attributes are not made because of humanity. He is who he is because that's who he is. That's why if you come to him, you must believe that he is who he is, a reward of them that diligently seek him. Other than that, you're not even going to be able to please him. And if you're trying to please anyone above God, you've idolized them. You've made them your God. And the reward comes from God. The just reward. But the just shall live by faith. And faith without works is dead. And prayer is an avenue toward works. Prayer is work. 
you are showing God through faith who you're seeking for your providential care. You're showing God through prayer who is on the throne. You're showing God through prayer the acknowledgement that he is your sovereign God. Let us get ready. You can't change people's thinking nor their ways. God never gave you the authority to do that. That's not your job. Don't try to do a job that's not yours to do. That's only his job to do through the spirit. We all have a job description from God. To offer up our body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. And to be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed through the renewing of our mind. That's our job description. To love the Lord God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. That's our job description. Some of you, and we all do this, even in regular jobs, we overstep boundaries and try to do God's job. And only God can do his job. We can't say no one. God does. For he was the only one that could die on that cross. Give up his spirit. Go to Hades. Take the keys. Swallow up death. Raise himself on the third day and sit at the right hand of the Father when he ascended and gave out what was necessary. We couldn't do that. We couldn't fulfill that job requirement. We wouldn't be qualified. We'll never be qualified for his job. And the father of lies will tell you things that are not true. Because that's his job. To deceive, to destroy, to kill, to lead you down paths of destruction. That's his job. And God does his job well. He's given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. But you have to access his throne to know what they are. He says, if you want wisdom, ask me. He didn't tell you to go to somebody to get it. He said, if you want it, ask me. He says, if you need help, come to me. He says, whatever you need me to be, I am what I am. I can do all things. He says, whatever you ask in my name, I hear you. And if I hear you, know that if you're in alignment with my will, I'm going to honor my will. He didn't say I'm going to answer everything you ask for. He's trying to keep you away from Satan, not put you in Satan's hands, not put you in Satan's wheel. He's trying to impart wisdom to you that we don't have except they come from him.
because he's the one that pours out. And then humanity wants to use the way of the world. And all God is going to tell you, you either choose him or you don't. That's the choice you can make. You can leave him or you can stay with him. That's the choice you made. Let's bring this to closure. We cannot find ourselves against the God that we say we love. It is our desire as a job description to be obedient to our employer, God. You see, not only is God our Lord and Savior, he's our employer. He says to pray without ceasing. He says to rejoice. He says to not quench the Holy Spirit. And yes, he did. And we have to stop viewing life based on the ways of the world. He tells us in everything to give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He says, despise not prophesy. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. This is all our job description. And when we fulfill our mandated job description, he says, and the very God of peace will sanctify you wholly. Spirit and soul and body and preserve you blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. We all have a job description. We all have a 1 Corinthians 5, 16 through 22 job description. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 22. We, always, we all have a Romans 12, 1 to 3 job description. And sometimes we don't want to accept our job description from God. Now, this job description is given by him. And you don't have to worry about people. Because this job description is not about what people want or what they're orchestrating. This job description is a requirement from God himself. This job description is based on God's will for your life. This job description is necessary. This job description is not optional. Tells us to carefully evaluate and observe all things. We are to live in him. With gratitude of the Holy Spirit. That indwells within us that gives us the discernment. And make known his righteousness. We are to value him more than everything and everyone. We are to be sincere, to reverence him. We are to have him on our throne as an affection, to love him. 
and he should be our devotion, who we are committed to, devoted to. Many are devoted to many people and things, but anything you devote higher than God, you have idolized. And that is not pleasing in the sight of God. Now let us bring this to close. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. Because we don't seek wealth, we seek you. Your provisions that are necessary daily for survival. We don't seek fame, we seek you. We don't even seek humanity, we seek you. Because that is the more excellent, the more wiser path of life. And so we thank you for your godly counsel that pervades. We thank you that no strongholds are able to bind. We thank you that the full armor had not been penetrated. We can stand boldly on your promises, on the knowledge and wisdom of your word because you keep your word. Your word is light and dark. Your word is power above all power. Your word is love, the spirit of love, the spirit of truth. And your word will last forever. So we honor you, God, the more excellent way. We honor the holy and sovereign one that can do above all that we could ever ask or think of according to the power that worketh within because the power within is the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. We honor you, God, because this knowledge and information didn't come from humanity. It came directly from you because you make known. You impart your wisdom in these earthly vessels. Because your kingdom cannot be operated and controlled by principality, spiritual wickedness, rulers in dark places, it's in humanity. You control. And you said certain things shall not inherit because you won't allow it to penetrate. Your righteousness prevails. Your judgment prevails. Your morality fails. Your word excels. La, 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 la. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Your Holy Spirit orchestra. And nothing or no one can assert themselves above you and prevail. So, Father, we humble ourselves in the most holy and righteous one, your presence. Understanding that we need you. We acknowledge the necessity of needing you to be providentially, actively involved and engaged in our life. We understand and acknowledge that we would know nothing except you revealed it. You proved that to be true when many didn't know the son. Then you revealed to them who he was. We acknowledge that principalities, spiritual wickedness, do have some knowledge of who you are. And so you give us more excellent knowledge. When to resist, when to rebuke, and when to submit. So we honor you, God, and we thank you for being the wise the only eternal, invisible, immortal, only wise God of creation. We acknowledge that. We live through it. And we're committed to you. The one who's providentially actively involved in the creation of your people. For you know those who are you. 
and you know those who will never be you. And so we operate in wisdom and not in folly. We operate in reverencing you, being devoted to you, and allowing your affection rule and reign in our life. In Jesus' name, we pray and give you the glory that you are truly due. It is something about holding on to God. Promises. You see, many will hold on to humanity's promises more than they'll hold on to God. Many will believe humanity over God. And Satan knows that. Why God gave us the writings of revelation to tell you how it shall end. That only he will know. And Satan cannot change the ending of God's plan and purpose. And it has been made manifested to humanity. And we can either receive the knowledge he has given, or we can be adorned with the lack of knowledge of this world, which perish. For God's people shall never perish with his knowledge. And he knows those that are his and those that fully trust. Faith without works is dead. Trust is work. Prayer is work. Obedience is work. And many are placing humanity's work, the physical, over the spiritual workings that are necessary to prevail, even during the physical. That's the God that we serve. You know, I must admit, God is wise than all. If you trust God, when God is ready to reveal to you all that you did because you trusted him above humanity, he will give you a praise report. La, 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 la. He adorned you with a garment of praise because you will soon find out that while you were working through obeying him and you could not see and fully understand the why, it was the faith that was being orchestrated, motivated through his Holy Spirit because you love him with all your mind, heart, body, and soul above all. that you were continuously seeking him. Even when the physical provisions, the physical was coming up against you in trials and tribulations, but the spiritual prevailed because you never took him off your throne. There's something about the intimate relationship with God. You don't have to prove or show anybody anything. God sees and knows it all. And he honors those who trust him. You become the praise of his glory because you first trusted him. Trust. Is faith in action. Trust is faith in action. Trust is faith in action. Sometimes we don't even acknowledge the God we say we trust. We will let others derail themselves. 
You'll be derailed by others who trust in what God never told you to put your trust in. There is a blessing in trusting God. Wrap me in your arms, God, and father me. Wrap me in your arms, God, and father me. That's what God will do to you when the world pulls you in all directions. When everybody got advice, but you only want to hear from God. God will wrap you in his arms. And he'll follow. He'll provide for you. He'll give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And how to apply it in your life. He'll increase your prayer life. He'll increase your trust in him. He will walk through you. With you. Through your journey of faith. He will take the unseen thing and assure you he's with you and all that he says shall come to pass it take the same things that may disinherit you and he'll remove them and you'll see his existence is far greater than humanity's perpetrator he'll show you he's omnipresent He's omniscient and omnipotent. He'll keep you. And hold you. In ways you won't even understand. And every day in your uprising, he'll be the first on your mind. And the last on your mind doing your downs. You're never alone. And the journey is not difficult when you trust a holy and righteous God. Because it's the inner strength that he gives you that far excels the worldly conformity. And it's the rejoicing that you have because you trusted in him. Hallelujah. Father, wrap me in your arms. Father, wrap me in your arms, Father, wrap me in your arms, Father, wrap me in your arms, Father, wrap me in your arms. Father, wrap me in your arms. Father, wrap me in your arms. Father, wrap me in your, your arms. Father, wrap. Me and your arms, Father, please wrap me in your arms, Father, wrap me in your arms, and Father, me. Hide me in the pavilion of the shadow of your mighty and father me and doll me with your Holy Spirit 
and seal me for eternity and father me be my righteousness consecrate and justify me and father me clothe me la 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 pata and father me keep me lord and father me wrap me in your arms god heavenly father and father me and father me glory hallelujah and father me and father me no one else can do what you can do and father me I bow humbly in your presence, Lord, and Father, me. Most holy, sovereign God of creation, and Father, me. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. And Father, me. Mm, mm, mm. When God moves, heaven and earth declares his glory.